Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Cyril, uh, and I'm from Shenzhen, China, obviously. Um, and I'm going to take you through uh, the wonders of, uh, and the mysteries of building a product to life uh, from nothing, as well as my mission to help uh, entrepreneurs um, solve the world's problems through hardware experiences. Um, so um, my name is Cyril, as I said, um, I'm a partner uh, at a, an early stage fund called SOS Ventures International. Uh, and I've been funding uh, a few experiential learning programs throughout China uh, and throughout um, uh, the US as well. Uh, I've been mentoring at uh, a few accelerator programs around the world. Um, and my background was more into uh, software um, that I've been developing in, in China, Japan, and Korea. Um, an investor in uh, quite a few number of, of startups, uh, primarily based in, uh, in the US. Um, and a few hardware startups in particular over the past few years have been the lead investor in a few of the companies that um, uh, you may know about out there. Um, and so by investing in um, quite a few hardware startups, I've been really part um, of uh, the um, so-called hardware revolution um, and been really um, pushing it pretty hard. Um, the hardware renaissance uh, is really about the combo of uh, software and hardware going together. Um, uh, there are a few startups that you recognize up there, uh, which is really the poster child of what's happening in the past few years. Um, but also, uh, the hardware renaissance has triggered really the interest of uh, big corporations, uh, such as Amazon, Google, and, and whatnot, which are you know, pure software players, um, which have been getting into hardware recently. Um, if there is one logo that seems weird uh, and is a bit on the left over there, um, you know, I haven't told you anything. Uh, they're just building a lab uh, in San Francisco. Um, so yeah, hardware is the new black. And the hardware renaissance has also been pushed by um, a variety of reasons um, in terms of rap rapid prototyping, uh, cost uh, going down and whatnot. Um, but arguably, um, a, a big thing that happened over the, over the past few years is the rise of Kickstarter and the rise of meaning um, uh, meaningful ways to finance uh, uh, the product uh, to get to market. So um, those are just graphs going straight up um, in terms of uh, number of uh, backers, which are in the hardware space, 6% of the total uh, backers on, on Kickstarter. The number of projects have been really um, skyrocketing. Um, and Crunchbase gives us the same data on the VC side, uh, where on the run rate, uh, basically everything is doubling or tripling uh, over the past few years. Um, it's still pretty uh, small compared to software, but uh, there is definitely a trend out there. Um, and the booming of Kickstarter has led uh, a lot of entrepreneurs um, in pain. Um, you may be backers of um, Kickstarter projects that haven't been delivering yet, and uh, you know, what do you do after you scored a million on Kickstarter? Generally, you have a plan, um, or not so much, because you were planning to raise you know, 50K, 100K, you end up with a hit, um, but you still want to ship in three months. You, you want to start pre-orders right after. You want to go to retail. Uh, you want to be in CS in January. And uh, you want to raise $10 million. Everything's fine. Uh, you just won. But there are a few problems with hardware. And um, people have you know, been thinking about the way they've been building software. And it's probably the same out there. You know, you start with uh, prototyping. Uh, you get through whatever is the second phase. Uh, then you become rich. Um, but when it comes down to building a hardware product, uh, it becomes a bit more difficult. Um, there are approximately 50 to 60 categories of knowledge um, that you should own uh, before you remotely want to be successful. Uh, they are all out there. Uh, there are lots of technicalities in bringing a product to, uh, to life, but also on the distribution of it, um, which uh, are extremely, uh, not necessarily complicated, but you have to take care of those. Uh, sometimes really complicated, depending on your product. So yeah, hardware is not software. And what methodology uh, you know, could we have so that we, have, uh, we could have hardware becoming more like software, a little bit more simple. And if you look at the lean software movement, um, there is uh, the classical saying of Steve Blank about no business plan survives contact with the customer. And so if you had an equivalent um, about that in hardware, 
since you are building a physical product, it probably should be no hardware plant survives contact with um, a factory. And this is lean hardware right there. And the big companies that have been building consumer electronics for many years understood that uh, since the beginning. Um, and in fact, they were all having their own internal factories, such as Apple. Um, and with the rise of the need of uh, computing uh, devices in the past 15 years, um, there was also a need to get um, to scale and to get into uh, a certain amount of cost so that the more people will buy uh, the devices as possible. And this is why the big companies have um, created a place on Earth called Shenzhen. Um, and in 2000, uh, Shenzhen used to do things um, uh, relatively with bad rep. Um, and the reason is that uh, the whole system has been really pushed by uh, a political agenda, which was based on subsidized currency, um, and which was bringing low labor cost uh, to uh, those companies bringing hardware into China um, and for them to uh, develop their devices. But there was quite a dubious quality, um, as uh, everybody has been probably experiencing um, back then. But the interesting thing that happened throughout those years, from 2000 to 2013 today, is the fact that an entire ecosystem has been built um, around, um, well, factories for factories, and factories for factories for factories, bringing parts, bringing materials, bringing assembly, bringing injection molding, bringing you know, plastics and whatnot, all together into a giant supply chain that has been blossoming through the years. And so fast forward to 2013, Shenzhen is a very different place. It used to be a terrible place. Uh, that's for sure. But today, it's really an interesting place because a lot of the methodologies also and the knowledge about how to make things have been transferred uh, into China and into the factories. And so the strength right now about there is about making things fast, at scale, flexibly, and still cheaper, relatively speaking, um, mainly because of the concentration of the actors being able to communicate with each other extremely quickly, and time is money. But also, an interesting thing that happened was uh, the overall quality has been continuously going higher and higher, thanks to the Apple of the world bringing us devices which uh, are just truly amazing, and every consumer on Earth decided that this was the new standard which is yet another problem for startups to deliver on. And when you look at what hardware startups need and how do they win, it's when they get first to market and having a product fully manufactured and delivered and in store becomes very um, uh, uh, a fast thing toward revenue and towards more scalable, uh, scalability. Um, and startups wins also when uh, they keep iterating uh, on their products and uh, when they are bringing their cost of goods sold down. So imagine that you get uh, a product to market, you get into store, more people are buying it, more people are talking to their friends about that device, meaning that you are selling more of those, meaning that you can go back to um, the cost of goods sold just being lowered. This helps you really and truly to get to a place where no competitors can uh, come and touch you. And so this is why um, a few years back, uh, we've built a program uh, called Hackcelerator, um, which I'm not going to bore you too much with, but uh, has really called people involved. Um, and fundamentally, the idea is really to piggyback on the infrastructure of Shenzhen, which became the perfect place to prototype and to get um, uh, to, manufacture, uh, to manufacture extremely quickly. So just going to show you a small video about Shenzhen. Uh, how many of you have been to Shenzhen before? A few, a few. Very good. So you know, if you've never been to China, let's travel a little. But Shenzhen, uh, uh, interestingly, is not what it used to be because all the factories have been pushed out of the city. Uh, and the one place that remains really the heart of consumer electronics is called Huachangbei. Uh, which is where our office um, is located, right there. And Hua Chiang Bay is really pretty amazing. It's you know, blocks and blocks and blocks of electronic parts down to finished products. And um, the two secrets that you can leverage over there is 
The first one, obviously, that you can get any parts within minutes instead of waiting for days or weeks uh, to get delivered. But also, um, all those um, uh, little booths are actually uh, a factory representative, which means that you can get extremely close to your supplier very quickly. And so I'm going to share you, uh, we don't have that much time left, uh, five things that I learned um, through uh, running the program. Uh, and those are the rules for falling hardware. The first one uh, comes from a company that went through the program. All of them uh, uh, went through the program. It's called Spark. Uh, it enables devices to become connected to the internet through Wi-Fi. And um, Zach has always been describing the experience about um, prototyping with uh, the right components. Because when you get down to, uh, to China, you realize that actually they are not using the same components as you do. And this can be an extremely painful redesign of everything. Not only that, but of course, there are plenty of ways where you can bring the, co the cost of goods all down uh, through your bill of materials. So rule number one, design with the right components. The rule number two um, is illustrated by Hex, which is a platform for drones, big and small ones. Um, and here, Bunny Huang, who hacked the Xbox and is the advisor to the program, told us that visiting a factory, a factory in person early is one of the secrets, because you really want to be designing with your factory. And actually, a prototype is ready when it can be manufactured. Nomico launched last year on Kickstarter. They are a sous vide device uh, that we've built together. Um, and um, the technical director of MakerBot, Zach, who is also uh, my technical partner at Hackcelerator, um, told us that your factory is indeed your most important partner. They are the people who are going to push your product to market. And so you should really select it extremely carefully and not have any third party involved between you and the factory. The reason is that uh, when there will be a problem, you better have access directly to the head of the factory so that you can make things um, done and extremely quickly. Another reality of that is that out of the 30 companies that went through the program, 30, um, uh, they are using 30 different suppliers and 30 different factories, uh, which shows that the diversity is extremely important. And choosing your partner with the right skills matters. Not every single product can be made by Foxconn. Things that most of startups forget because they are into the technicalities and into the manufacturing is that branding matters. And being memorable is extremely, extremely important. Um, Mark uh, Barros from Contour um, said once that um, uh, they have been outbranded by GoPro. Uh, when people want to make and trust your brand um, to buy a product, it becomes extremely important to be memorable. And finally. This one, I'm not going to show you the device, because it's uh, a sex toy that you can control uh, through your smartphone. Uh, is uh, actually a lot more interesting than it looks. It's not about using your smartphone to you know, RC car your sex toy. Uh, it's more about the experience that you can bring. And the whole business model is based around the marketplace, where you can download stories, and the device will play with it. So. Things used to be made in Shenzhen, right? Today, things are designed with Shenzhen. And the 30 companies are down to working with their suppliers um, at any time over there. Uh, into this new city, which uh, is not the factory of the world anymore, but is becoming really more about the hardware central of the world. And it's pretty lively. It's pretty fun. Uh, these are some pictures of the markets. Uh, it's extremely green. Changed a lot. Used to be a terrible place. but this is pretty nice. Uh, and if this slide looks over the top a little, it's because it's, it's over the top. Uh, but uh, 2014 is going to be the year of hardware. And uh, we invite you to test to um, uh, create new devices that solve worse problem. Uh, so join us in Shenzhen. There is a new program uh, in January for Hackcelerator. And um, thanks a lot for your time. We look forward to seeing you in China. Thank you.